It is time for another professional match of StarCraft 2 and what I got for you today is a Zerg vs Terran on one of the new maps that recently got added to the game. Abyssal Reef Alley. Spawning in the top left corner of the map, we have none other than from Team Splice. He is known as Solar and he is going to be playing with the red Zerg pieces today. And his opponent spawning in the bottom right corner, playing for Team Expert, the current world champion of StarCraft 2. He is known as Bjorn, and of course, he will be playing with the blue Terran pieces today as well. Now, like I said, this is one of the new uh, one of the new maps that went live just a couple of days ago, and this is actually kind of an interesting one, as as far as I know, it is the very first competitive map that is actually being played in one versus one, where we are playing underwater. I mean, you may have noticed already. It is called Abyssal Reef for good reason. We are quite literally underwater and the way it works, uh, obviously there's all kinds of little crevices right there and we can see little fish and whatnot float about which is pretty cool to see. Uh, but the way it works is actually kind of interesting as well because not only do apparently floating sharks uh, go around the battlefield, on top of that the units that die and whatnot actually will die upwards. Like they will actually try uh, and, and, and float up to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, to the surface of the water, uh, which is a little bit crazy. I'll try and show you that in just a little bit uh, once this game gets underway. But anyways, it is Bjorn versus Solar, an extremely high level Terran versus Zerg. Bjorn, like I said, current world champion of StarCraft 2. Uh, he's playing for Team Expert, he's won a WCA, he won the WCS BlizzCon Finals, he's won a GSL, and he's won roughly 340,000 American dollars in prize money alone. So this guy, definitely on an absolute roar, but I am absolutely, like I'm a massive fan of Solar as well. Uh, this guy has earned roughly $194,000. Uh, he's won an SSL, he won three Dream Hacks, and he won an MSI tournament as well. And he's one of my absolute favorite Zerg players to watch. And as you may be aware, I do main Zerg for most of my games. Although I play a significant amount of random nowadays as well. Uh, Solar and Dark are always, have, they've really always been uh, some of my favorite players in the entire game. Now it's actually kind of funny. I just looked it up. I saw someone ask it in one of the previous videos. It's like these guys have been, a, you know, they've been around for a little while. Look at these fish, by the way. But they, these guys have been, you know, competing for a little while. How old are they? And actually just looked it up. It's weird because I remember watching Solar like four years ago. Uh, winning tournaments back then as well. This guy is is 20 years old. He's, he's 20 years old and his opponent uh, Bjorn is currently 23 now the funny thing about a lot of these pro gamers while this game is by the way starting up very very normally here The Reaper is just gonna be harassing and scouting a little bit um, The funny thing is that a lot of these guys like in particular the Korean pro gamers start really very young and usually Usually they like retire pretty young as well after you know, they get past their prime It's kind of interesting to see that most of them start complaining that they're not fast enough anymore when they like reach age 25 or so which is pretty crazy to see. Also, like, um, the best and most well-known pro gamer of all time, Flash, is, I believe, a little bit younger than myself, and I'm, I'm 24, which is pretty insane, because he's been around for, like, over a decade at this point. But anyways, enough about that. Let's talk a little bit about the Zerg versus Terran matchup, and more importantly, about this map. Because ZVT, uh, it's pretty similar as it's always been for a while, while mech play uh, was becoming more popular for a bit. Um, it looks like in this particular match, we just see a super standard build here from Bjorn going for that double barracks play and going quickly into it. You see that? Did you see that thing die just start there? It, it floated up. I don't know exactly what that was. That may have been a mule or something. But anyways, uh, regardless, he's going for a super standard standard play here and actually it looks like Solar may very well be able to get this around right here on the very first Reaper and indeed do take that one out which is awesome uh, but for example taking a third base on Abyssal Reef is a bit interesting so the main is pretty clear right the natural is pretty clear as well however for the third you could take it right here you could take it right here as well which is a little bit more scary because there is sort of a ramp over here leading over there and then also, on top of that, uh, there is the area, apparently, that Solar is deciding to go for, that is over here, right next to the natural, um, and a little bit easier to expand, but also a little further away. Now, it's interesting to see, because of all of the games that I've watched on this map so far, it seems like the pro gamers all have got a different kind of plan in mind, a different way they want to go ahead and approach this. And actually, hold that thought for a little bit, because I thought Beyond was going to go for the double meta drop, uh, but instead, he's also building some uh, some re or some Hellions, rather, and he's 
just going for a single medevac here, uh, not landing it just yet, using it for scouting for the time being to potentially pick off any any overlords. But here he will be able to start moving across the map with quite a powerful army, actually. This is a bit of an interesting push, something we haven't seen all too much of. And we do see a switch right now to that Liberator as well. And it really is the question here, is Solar not overdrawing? Because he's he's been making a ton of workers. He's actually currently up 47 workers over 30 of his opponent, which is a massive advantage. Like, that will give him a ton of additional income, but it will only pay off if he manages to hold all of this aggression. And with those Hellbats joining the fight, I wonder if he's got enough right here. Now we do see the stim forward, trying to snipe down any of these queens as early as possible. Very nicely done, going for the surround here as well. And actually, the Solar uh, Solar did just manage to snipe down that medevac with the queens, which is extremely helpful, as eventually, it looks like, for the time being at least, this Terran aggression is going to be warded away. A bit of an interesting move there by Bjorn, going that deep onto the creep. Definitely made it a bit easier for his opponent to try and do so. And you can really see, like, that worker count, it's only going to go more and more in favor of Solar right now. And the income will be significantly significantly in his favor. Look at that income right there. Uh, of course, this is with Mules landed as well. That's going to be a huge difference right here. But anyways, looks like the Terran player is not done just yet. Still a lot of Marines here. And of course, that one Liberator on the high ground helping out a lot as well. is going to be shooting from the skies. And while it does get shot down here, eventually it did take out a Queen and maybe even a second one on top of that as well. These Marines, of course, microing backwards, doing beyond things because he has some of the best control. But look at that! <gasps> you can see that Hellbat! That Hellbat was floating up. Look at that! That's the Zirkling! Isn't that amazing? I mean, I love those physics. This is something we haven't seen before in StarCraft 2. I'm such a nerd. I love talking about this game. But regardless, like, that's so badass. You see all these little bits and pieces floating to the surface rather than, you know, scattering on the ground. It's so cool. Anyway, Bjorn still pushing onwards, being really aggressive here. There are a ton of queens now, though, which definitely make this, you know, uh, relatively easy for him to defend. Of course, he does need uh, a little bit more than just the queens here to try and hold on, but all of these marines are extremely low, and while they are target firing down very nicely here, once this next influx of Zerklings arrive, I think they are going to be picked off. But hold that thought, though, because they are still pushing onwards as well. They are doing a significant amount of damage, considering the very small investment that Bjorn had to make here to try and get this up and running. But it looks like eventually all of these Terran units are indeed going to be forced home, at very least for right now. Now, Bjorn, um, I don't know exactly where he favors to get the third. It seems like most Terran players like to get it right here on the low ground instead, as they can defend that a little bit easier than, say, a Zerg player will, because they don't have to worry about, like, siege tank shooting from the high ground or whatever. But he's still pushing on. Like, he's still doing aggression here, which is absolutely insane. Like, you usually see this being shut down just a little bit after it begins, right? After the initial double medevac harassment goes down, but he is just fighting non-stop. And slowly but surely, he is definitely getting himself a nice little advantage. I mean, he's able to clean up a lot of these creep tumors here, which definitely hurts the Zerg here, because eventually those queens will not be able to defend anymore. And while that transfuse also wasn't being hit, and a lot of these units are still floating to the surface, um, this, is, this is actually a little bit scary. And Bjorn finally manages to obtain a supply lead here as well, which is really nicely executed by him. Uh, pretty significant, already 10 supply ahead in 80, uh, you know, in 8 minutes right here, which is definitely very solid. And he's still got that, you know, that army advantage here as well. And he's going to keep on producing more and more units, forcing his opponent to not really tech up either. I mean, we do see that lair finally being moved, morphed in here from Solar, but this aggression still is not done just yet. And here we go. The main things are, of course, out now. They are trying to connect. Once again, that medevac will be able to hit it very very nicely there and of course all of those bane links are being microed beautifully there and the snipes by Bjorn were extremely solid but of course he still needs to deal with that look at that micro there beautifully played and he's gonna be able to shoot these queens away at the very least for right now very nicely done that marine however gonna have to float to the surface I'm gonna zoom in on those things the entirety of the match be prepared for it okay I'm gonna have to cast a couple of games on this map before I will stop doing so but look at this, though. Beautiful game here, and he's going to indeed be able to land that third base at this low ground location, a little bit easier for a Terran player to defend into. It looks like Solar, while all of the aggression was going on, eventually did snuck out a third base, and he's going to be able to, or a fourth base, rather, and he's going to be able to start researching uh, the Baneling speed upgrade now as well, and on top of that, he's going to start the run buys here with the Zerklings. Now, there is not a whole lot of defense uh, set up right now, because all of the Terran army is, in the meantime, across the map, and look at all of those Banes. They're 
gonna be able to do a lot of damage. Of course, there is a Widow Mine on the ground as well, so this is really important to keep in mind. But on, while this is all up, the Zerklings are indeed killing a ton of these SCVs, and it may very well be forcing some of these units home as well. Nice little bit of target firing there by the Widow Mine, taking out a couple of the Marines with it as well. But a lot of those Zerklings end up falling, which is extremely painful. And oh, look at that. Did you see that? That was beautiful. Once again, a lot of these things floating up. This is a little scrap of, uh, of an SCV there. <laughs> that is so cool. But 15 SCVs end up falling. That is insane. Like, that's a ton of them. And on top of that, a couple of Banes are ready to roll in as well once this roly-poly upgrade finishes up in just a couple of seconds. And they may very well be able to do some damage. Now, there is a nice little wall off here by Bjorn, making sure that he does not uh, get all of those Banes straight up into his turret or natural. But, of course, the bailing speed will help out with defending against this aggression very, very nicely as well. And while these depots eventually do end up falling, I wonder if they're going to do any damage. Wow, actually, a little bit of an uncharacteristic kind of move there. Hold firing, but oof. Yeah, he did target fire there eventually there. I was going to say, like, I didn't think that Bjorn would take any damage from that. And eventually he did micro that just barely right. But that could have done a ton of damage. In the meantime, Bjorn loading up two Metavex as well. And it looks like they are headed towards the main base. A lot more Zerklings and a lot more Banelings going down as well. No time here to switch into anything else. Like, for example, Mutalisk here. At the very least, four right now by Solar. He is trying to build up a significant force now, though. And he once again does have that uh, supply lead after killing a lot of these SCVs and once again Bjorn immediately using this to his advantage and walling that area off. Of course he does find those Banelings uh, scanning ahead here to figure out exactly what is going on and the Zerklings are also caught with their pans down because they will be able to get a run or they will be able to eventually get on out of there but not without a couple of their brothers dying in the process. A couple of these Marines actually in that dropship still doing a significant amount of damage. He's splitting off units every which way just to try and keep track of everything that's going on. But slowly but surely, this, this Terran army is really starting to build up. Like, this is starting to become a really terrifying army. Although he is pushing really far onto the creep and that can be a mistake because there are tons of Zerklings here and tons of Banelings as well. While the Metavex do pick up and get on out of there eventually, there are still Zerklings in every which way and they will be able to kill as many of those SCVs as they would like to. At this point though, Supply is heavily in favor of Solar. Actually, he just, uh, beyond that is, he just produced a, a bunch of units there as well. Evening up the supply count a little bit more. But I'm going to have to give the advantage so far here to Solar. Not really missing a beat here. And still, you know, more and more of those corpses floating to the surface. This is a little bit scary, though. Bjorn is looking like he's going to be able to defend against these Zerkling run -bys much more easily now that he's got all of his units split up rather than in the same location. Really nice little wall here as well from Bjorn. Of course, these games uh, do take a little bit of time to figure out uh, what the ideal builds and, and strategies and whatnot are for these kind of maps. But the Widow Mine placement is looking spot on. This little wall here will make defending much easier. The Triple Depot wall off here also making this much easier easier to defend into and of course the council with that medevac will eventually slow down the zerk economy as well and Bjorn is definitely doing Bjorn things here, not really missing a beat when it comes to his macro and really making sure that he gets a ton of units out and slowly uh, grabbing himself that supply lead once again, which is really well done. Usually pretty difficult for a Terran player to try and achieve, but of course Solar not really missing a beat either. He's eventually going to be able to tech up towards the Hive here, really defending and relying uh, on his Queen's Zerklings and Banelings, which is a bit of an awkward unit composition, but with this many Queens, of course, once he eventually gets for example ultras or brute lords out they're gonna have transfused for days but a lot of those transfusers are indeed being used now that these marines are being target fired at the same time a couple of these scvs shooting or a couple of these marines rather shooting from the high ground as well trying to pick up as many of the drones as they possibly can and while eventually that army does get cleaned up as well those widow mine hits are absolutely enormous and without the mutas that's really tricky but of course the zerg macro with more than 60 marine or 60 uh zerkings rather on the production tap he is not slowing down here either and he's going straight up into that ultralist cavern how many queens are there currently out on the map there are currently 10 of them which is going to be great and on top of that he's going to get that adrenal glance and really solid upgrades here on those zerklings very shortly making this significantly easier to defend into but the counter attack seems to have shut down here at the very least for the moment here for the zerk because there's just simply not that many options here to fight into i mean everything is very well locked down here beautiful defense here by beyond not really allowing himself uh, to take any damage from any of those Zerklings just with some properly produced 
buildings and some solid sensor tower placements as well so he can keep track of all of the movement close to his base and while the queens are actually defending really nicely against these drops these marines and those marauders are definitely becoming really well upgraded making those widow mines much weaker all of these units though floating to the skies after they do end up dying and while the bailing will be able to connect two more marines are still alive and a lot of those marines and marauders and medivacs are pushing onwards into the zerg fourth base location it is indeed going to end up falling in that low ground position very tricky like i mentioned for a zerg player to defend into although gotta be really careful here as the terran player these widow mines can still do a ton of damage but on top of that the banelings can indeed snipe a significant chunk of the forces but the physics they're so very much different like i see units floating up to the to the surface everywhere which is so strange to see and empty matter of fact drop trying to threaten and pull the zerk out of position here but the ultralisk will be coming out very very shortly but Bjorn using his you know superb control to his advantage here looks like he's gonna be able to get himself a really nice setup here as far as the supply leads go because he's more than doubling his opponent's supply now and while eventually the queens as well as the ultras will be able to join this fight and at the very least for right now you know maybe solar will be able to hold on but slowly but surely, Bjorn will be able to overrun his opponent and GG is called where Bjorn manages to pick up the victory. Beautiful game here by Bjorn, really nicely controlled, abusing the map uh, movement really to his advantage, which is extremely well done. Of course, like I said, it takes a couple of weeks and sometimes even months and years before players really figure out all of the ins and outs of that map or of any new map. And this is definitely a tricky one because there are so many bases to take, but also so many high and low grounds. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. And while you're at it, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next one.